I wanted to just ask about this loop that I've heard a bit about, the Alderson loop. Okay. What is it? Well, that's, that's, that's a good question. So I, and we've, fortunately, you emailed me and asked me about this beforehand. And I thought, what on earth is that? So I went and did some digging. I first of all went and, well, I stole Dave Brailsworth's copy of the uh, New Hacker's Dictionary, although this one doesn't actually have anything that might tell us what it is. We've got alpha particles, all elbows. I've not come across that before. That's probably worth a computer file at some point. And then it's aliasing. So we don't seem to have anything on Alderson loops there. So I sort of did a bit more digging. And fortunately, Eric Raymond, who wrote that, has a version of it, the jargon file, on his website, which does cover the Alderson loop. So I can explain a bit about what it is and where it comes from. A loop in computer software basically is trying to do the same code multiple times until some condition is met or while some condition is true. You can write it either way. You can say, repeat this until this condition is met or while this condition is true, do these operations. And there's various reasons why you have to do that. Um, you can also set that so that it happens an infinite number of times, i.e. It keeps looping and looping and looping and looping and looping and looping and looping. Are we in the halting problem world here? Um, not really, because you may want it to loop forever. So, for example, if you write a, a network server, what you'll probably do at some point is say, loop forever, answering connections from the network, and then you'll just kill the process if you wanted to stop. You don't particularly want your there to be some condition that can be reached that will kill a network server, a web server, because someone might force that condition to happen. But the Alderson loop is a variation on the infinite loop, and it sort of combines both loops, infinite loops, but also a bug in the code. So as we said, we can write infinite loops that we want to happen, but the Alderson loop is a specific type of infinite loop where if you look at the source code for the program, um, then it's obvious that the programmer didn't intend this to be an infinite loop. There is some part of the source code for the program that would stop the loop in some circumstances. But due to the way the rest of the program is implemented, it's not possible for that exit condition to ever be reached. So while there is a way out of the loop, there's no way for the program to ever reach that point of the code because of other things in the program. Um, the classic example, apocryphally, that caused it to be named this was that the programmer, named with Alderson, um, created a dialog box in Microsoft Access that had code that if you clicked OK would make it disappear, but it didn't have an OK button, so you could never click OK, so you couldn't get rid of the dialog box and so on. So it's, a, it's an infinite loop where the programmers put code in that should make it exit, but for some reason this code can't exit in the current way it's running. I guess you could get it, for example, if someone is checking for a key on the numeric keypad to be pressed, but you're running on a laptop which doesn't have a numeric keypad, so you can't press that key at all or something. So yeah, that's what the Alderson loop is. Can we write something that does this? I mean, is it straightforward as that? Um, yeah, I mean, you, you basically you could write code that, um, I mean, let's give it, I mean, let's give it a go. Let's find a computer where we can quickly write some program. So we're gonna implement a program with a sort of example of what might cause an Alderson loop. So let me just switch into BBC Basic so I can knock something up relatively quickly. So let's just start going into mode 12. What we're going to do is we're going to write a program that enables people to vote on their favourite, well, let's go for their favourite computer file um, presenter, and then eventually you'll be able to press another key to go and see what the results of that would be. We'll start by creating a, a very simple for loop which clears off the initial votes. I'm having to remember my BBC Basic. It's been about 30 years since I last coded it in anger, but we're getting there. I've got to make sure I get this right so I get the right sort of loop condition in there. Will this be on GitHub? Um, if I can figure out how to get it over the Ethernet onto a machine that I can upload it over the Ethernet onto GitHub, yes. Um, if anyone's got a GitHub client for Riscos, please let me know. <laughs> So we've got a program here which enables us to vote for our favourite computer file presenter. Um, and we've got three options. And if we run the program, we've got three options. We can vote for Dave Brailsford. And I think quite a few people like Dave, so we'll give him a few votes. We can vote for me and we can vote for Mike Pound. But we can also press zero to see the vote graphics. And if I press zero, 
oh, I'm stuck in this loop. It's not recognizing that as an exit condition. Then we can still vote, we're still at the point. Oh, someone's voted for Mike. Oh, it doesn't even let, let you vote for Mike. Yeah, so. Might be a bit of favouritism in the voting here system here, it might be rigged. But we can't get out of it unless we hit escape to kill the programme. Now why is this happening? Well if we look at our code, and let's go into a mode where we can see a bit more on screen at once. We've got the code here, so we're printing out the display at the top, which is the sort of who do we want to vote for and instructions. Then we print out the prompt, press the key to vote. We read in the key using the get command in BBC Basic, we then print it out. And then we then loop until we've got a valid value, i.e. one that's greater than zero and one that's less than three. Then we set the votes in the vote array, converting it from ASCII to an integer offset into our vote that we've created there and increment it by one. So we do this until we get the key code that represents the letter zero. We do have an exit condition for this loop because we're saying repeat this, the whole of this, until the key code that's pressed, which we've got in the variable A percent, is equal to the ASCII code for zero. But we also have this loop here between lines 160 and 200 that check that the key that's been pressed is one of the valid options. What we're trying to do here is make sure that we've got a valid option before we try and update the values for the votes, otherwise we'd crash the program or at least get an error message from the basic interpreter. 8% has to be greater than the ASCII code for 0 and less than the ASCII code for 3. This bit of the code means that this exit condition can never be reached because it says that the ASCII code has to be greater than 0. And so if to end that loop it has to be greater than 0, it cannot be equal to 0 at this point. So we've effectively created a program with a very simple Alderson loop and a little bug which means no one can vote for Mike. Bagley!